Well, I hope that I've got a fun one for you this time. We're on the technician. That's element two exam study. We're in sub element seven delta. And I'm going to use a online program called Tinkercad today to show you some of these simulations. So the first question is, which instrument would you use to measure electric potential? Now, remember that electric Potential could also be known as electromotive force, and we learned earlier electromotive force is measured in volts. So you would use a voltmeter. And looking over here, this is Tinkercad. This is what I'm calling the voltmeter. <laughs> and it is a voltmeter. It's just a simulation of one. And so we'll look at that in a moment. How is a voltmeter connected to a component to measure applied voltage? That is in parallel. Now, if you go back and look, you can see that you have my main circuit has one path to flow. Then there's another path that flows through the voltmeter. And when we simulate, we get about 8.7 volts. This is a 9 volt battery and this is a 50 ohm resistor so it's it's overloading the battery that's why you're not seeing 9 volts. If I were to change this resistance then you would see that as the resistance goes up you get a little bit closer to the 9 volts. 9 volts are not meant for a lot of current. When configured to measure current, how is a multimeter connected to a component? And not just to a component, but to the whole circuit itself. And that is going to be in series. So if we go back and look, you can see here for this one, this is one path. So it's in series with this resistor. Now, originally we had a 50 ohm resistor over here. And now... We have a 50 ohm resistor over here. You can see this is drawing 175 milliamps or 175 thousandths of an amp. That's the 50 ohm and that's that's a lot for a 9 volt battery. So if you change this to 5000, then you're going to notice that the voltage goes up as the current drops. Now we only have 1.8 milliamps. So that's a whole lot less. But notice that it is in series and not in parallel to measure amperage. So you can see that I have this selected as amperage, the amp meter. Which instrument is used to measure electric current? Now current is the flow of electrons. And that is the A meter or the, they call it the amperage mode of the multimeter, but it's an A meter. That is what measures the electric current. Which of the following can damage a multimeter? That is attempting to measure voltage when using the resistance setting. So why don't we go try that out? You can see here that we're trying to measure voltage, but what if I change this to resistance? It says error. Now, if it was a mechanical multimeter with a meter, an actual magnetic meter, it would probably break it. You could bend the needle, you could bust the magnet in it somehow, tear it up big time, but you could see that it is an error. That's why you need to make sure that if you are going to measure, and you can't do it in Tinkercad, if you wanted to measure the resistance, you would have to remove that wire and then measure the resistance that way. And, of course, it's 5 kilo ohms, which is 5,000 ohms, and earlier we had it at 50 ohms. Okay, so let's go back to the test itself. Attempting to measure voltage when you have it in the resistance setting. Now, if you want to know more about that, Google how does a multimeter work or how does a resistance meter or a voltage meter work, and you'll see the science behind it. That's not the purpose of this test today. Which of the following measurements are made using a multimeter? Well, from these choices, it is voltage and resistance. 
my multimeter also has current, it has a lot of stuff. So the, out of the choices, you have voltage and resistance. Uh, we're switching gears here for just a minute. Now we're going to talk about solder. Which of the following types of solder should not be used for radio and electronic applications? Solder is a mixture of metals so that they can melt at a fairly low temperature. This is called a lead tin solder. And the most popular is 6040. 6337 is also a really nice one. This is a 6040, so it's 60% lead, 40% tin and I think I have that in the right direction but at any rate this is rosin core solder so rosin core solder and it doesn't say it on that one but you can see on this one it says rosin core solder if you use acid core solder which is mainly for plumbing stuff like that it will eat up your circuit board so you do not want to use acid core solder. So if you go and look at these, you'll see acid. That is a bad thing for electronics. Lead tin solder is fine. Rosin core solder. Lead tin solder usually is rosin core solder, unless you're going to apply solder somewhere else. And then you have a tin copper solder. solder. And those are fine. But acid, just remember, acid is bad. What is the characteristic appearance of a cold tin lead solder joint? Well, we're going to go to one of my favorite places to shop. Not sponsored by Adafruit, but Adafruit, she's got a nice common soldering problems. We have a cold joint. Insufficient wetting, which looks like a cold joint. Cold joint. See, these are, these are all pretty ugly solders. And then you have an okay one, and this one looks pretty good right here. You can go check this out, common soldering problems. This is what solder ought to look like. Solder ought to look like this. That is a good solder joint. And then you can go through and see some of these other solder jobs. I mean, they might work for a minute, but you definitely don't want a cold solder joint. They're very bad. Okay, so you can go check out all of this stuff, and hey, look, she's got an example of everything right there. Check that out so you can learn about soldering. But it is a rough or lumpy surface. Uh, dark black spots just means that you have burned uh, uh, rosin on the board. You can clean that off with, with a little alcohol and a dust-free cloth. A bright or shiny surface is great. That's perfect. Excessive solder is not necessarily a cold joint, but it's not good. But that's not the answer to the question. It is a rough or lumpy surface. What, what reading indicates that an ohmmeter is connected across a large discharged capacitor? That is increasing resistance with time. Now, if you want to know why, when you re measure resistance, the, vo the, the ammeter, or sorry, the ohmmeter is actually outputting a voltage and it's measuring it across a certain little bridge. And so if we go back to here, this right here is a circuit that has a very large capacitor. This is a monster of a capacitor. Now in real life it, that would be something else. But when I hit start simulation you can watch the resistance is climbing. That's because voltage that is used to measure the resistance is actually charging the capacitor itself. So your answer is increasing resistance with time. If you see that most likely there's a capacitor in there so you may not get a good reading across uh, whatever you're trying to measure. And the last question, and we just went over this just a minute ago, which of the following precautions should be taken when measuring in-circuit resistance with an ohmmeter? And that is to ensure that the circuit is not powered. So 
I can't do it here, but imagine you're working with 120 volts and you're going to go try to measure the resistance of this resistor. You might get more than an error. You might get more than you bargained for. You might get an explosion. So, or at least a blown fuse to protect your life and safety. So ensure that the circuit is not powered. I'm Robbie, W1RCP. Like and subscribe. Like the video. Subscribe to the channel to show your support. Thanks so much to 73.